Welcome to Signs Unscripted. I'm Robin Donovan, Signs of the Times Editor-in-Chief, and with me today is... Jeff Russ, Senior Art Director of Signs of the Times. And unlike the way we usually record, today we are both in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the Signs of the Times office. Pretty cool. It's a rare occasion. (laughs) It is. So, Jeff, you're here today because I was hoping you could give sign makers everywhere some insight on taking better photos of their signs. Well, I can certainly do that, and the, the first, the stuff seems obvious, but the first thing I would say is make sure your stuff is in focus, because yes. if it's not in focus, you can't fix that in Photoshop. Yeah. Everything else is fair game. Sure, and before we get too far into this, we should mention that if you want to read a whole article by Jeff on, on this with tons of detail, it's in our December issue on page 44. So, Jeff... One thing I think we should get straight is what kind of equipment do you need to take a good photo? Because I think it's not that much, right? It isn't, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I use my phone. Well, you know, actually, so I heard that they did a whole episode uh, or issue of Bon Appetit or one of those with only iPhone photos. Did you ever hear that? Yeah, and you know what? I've talked to photographers, and I've got friends that are professional photographers, and when I pull my phone out and take a photo, I used to get a lot of bad glances and now that's what they use yeah you know I'm not talking about for their professional work but mostly that's what they take yeah so it turns out that your cell phone is fine so if your excuse is that you don't have a good camera it's no excuse that's true so what else well the easiest thing to remember is other than keep it in focus is to take a few photos three or four horizontally vertically Um, That way, later, you've got more options Mm -hmm. for cropping and composition. And I want to say one of the things you told me when I was traveling and taking photos of signs was to get as close to the sign as possible. Yes. um, Closer is better. You get more detail. Consider the light. I know it seems silly. Half the time you're standing in the middle of the street. So (laughs) I guess I'd say be safe, but get as close as you can. Yeah. Don't get hit by a car. (laughs) Although, theoretically, if you're taking photos at dawn and dusk when you have the best light, there shouldn't be too much traffic, but um, be safe out there. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Right. And another thing is the photo size. You can always make a photo smaller, but you can't make it bigger. So uh, when you're saving the photo or emailing it to yourself or whatever you do to get it off your phone, keep it actual size. Mm-hmm. And sometimes your email program will automatically like downsize the photos. And if that's the case, one of the things that's worked for us is to have people send them using this service called WeTransfer. And they're not an advertiser or anything, but it's just a free website. It's wetransfer.com. And you don't have to have an account. It's really handy. And you can just upload your stuff. And I guess it's sending it through the cloud. You put in your email and you put in the recipient's email and they'll even send you an email when it's been downloaded. So if your inbox or your outbox are overloaded, I think that's a really good tool. And there's several of those we transfer is just like the one we happen to use. I know people also like uh, Dropbox. And there used to be, uh, there's something called You Send It, which I think is a Dropbox competitor. I'm not sure if that's still around. All of that stuff works. And mm-hmm. it, there's a, it's a low hurdle. Yeah. What about in terms, Jeff, of just getting a good photo? Because we certainly... We receive a lot of photos that are like, eh, they're okay, but they're not fantastic. Well, one of the things is, is is your own eye. You compose it. Luckily, you can see the photo on your phone. Make sure the photo, the sign is centered. Make sure you have, if to the extent that you can, a nice blue sky. Um, if there's garbage on the street, kick it away. You know, that kind of common sense type stuff. But all of that means is, you know, actively try to take a pretty photo Mm -hmm. that already gets you halfway there right the other half we can do in photoshop yeah and sometimes if you can get the angle of the photo it seems like so that there's not people in the background so sometimes you have to awkwardly stand next to a sign and wait and i've noticed that a lot of what seems obvious in the end is not obvious in the moment because you're thinking oh there's people around and i'm in the way but you do have to, sometimes you just stand there for a while and wait for people to move. You might be like pulling a trash can out of the way or kicking some debris out of the way. Maybe you're trying to angle it so that there's not 27 power lines in the background. So like all of those things can make a really big difference. 
what you want to do is get away from having snapshot quality, meaning low quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's literally walk up, take the picture, and walk away. Yeah. And just wait a few seconds till the situation improves, your photo improves. Yeah. So I think um, once you've taken the photo, there's also some things that you can do in Photoshop to make it better or even on your phone, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't have to be in Photoshop. Every photo manipulation program has the ability to increase the brightness and contrast, um, to change the DPI, to adjust the color, um, that kind of thing. If you want to go deeper than that, like literally getting rid of the power lines you talked about, then you need a more robust photo manipulation software and cl do some cloning and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not even that high of a learning curve. Yeah, it's something you can probably figure out. And there's a lot of photo editing apps, like the iPhone has stuff built in. You can even, if you use Instagram, like the, the if you use Instagram, you can edit something on Instagram and screenshot it to save it, or I think there's a way of saving it too. So I mean, there there are some really... I don't, I don't love the term idiot proof, but there are some simple tools that you can use. So I guess also, Jeff, while we're talking about this, why should people care if they have a good photo? Why does it matter? Well, ultimately, um, you're displaying your work. You're and if yourself. you make it look better, it makes your, I mean, to be honest, nothing short of the human face photographs as well as a sign. They look gorgeous. Mm, they do. And, and, you know, in photos. And if you can bump the contrast or bump the color, or make the sky look a little bit more blue, it makes the sign look better, ultimately makes your work look better. Yeah, and I think that in some ways the standards for photos have gone up, and I think I think Instagram has driven it. I'm totally biased because I love Instagram, but I think people have started looking at photos and realizing that a, a good photo is better than it used to be. Like it, People now, your everyday person is like, oh, the lighting on this isn't great. There's a lot of shadows. Or why did you take it with them looking into the sun, right? So people know about that stuff now. Well, it's like the same reason you would have a beautiful business card. Mm -hmm. You know, here you're presenting your work. Yeah. And you can, I think, you can market yourself as being, you know, you can add a level of sophistication by having great photos of your work. Because if you do great work and you have crappy photos, it's going to actually make you look like you're not as good of a fabricator as you are. And it seems silly, but it's totally true. Yeah, people will stalk you if they're thinking about <laughs> hiring you. They will go to your Facebook yeah. page and they will look through 100 yeah. photos. And the, those 100 photos are beautiful. You've increased your chance of getting mm -hmm. their work. Yeah, and if you have great social media photos of your work, hopefully people in your community are liking them and commenting on them, which will increase the reach of your posts. So you might reach new customers just because your posts are getting traction. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other things are. I mean, I can say even as magazine editors, when we are evaluating someone as a source for a story, we look at their website and their social media. And if the website's really awful and the photos are really terrible, we are less likely to contact them just because we don't know. You know, we don't know how good of a sign maker they are. And if the photos are terrible, we're also concerned, you know, like that maybe other things aren't up to par. So it's a little bit of an unfair metric, I'm sure, in some cases, but it's the way that it is. Yeah, and you know, that brings up another good point, which is, if there's a certain aspect of the sign that was very complicated or that you're very proud of, take detail shots. Yeah. You can get up really close, take mm -hmm. a shot. Um, the people that are looking to buy from you know what to look for. Yes. And they'll, they'll want to see that stuff. Yeah, and this seems obvious, but if it's an electric sign, take a picture at night or at dusk or at dawn with the sign on. It's amazing how many people send us Beautiful electric signs not lit up, and, and that's 50% of the beauty of them. And, you know, I really feel for that bit of advice because it's hard to want to get up from your dinner table, say goodbye to your kids, and go take that yeah. night shot, but it really is worth it's, it. It's worth it. So, Jeff, before we go, because we just have like a minute or so left, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in the sign industry? Because I don't know if our whole audience knows, but you've actually been working with our brand for decades. Well, I've been with Signs of the Times for, gosh, yeah, decades, 25 years. 
I've probably looked at more photos of signs than <laughs> anybody that's listening to this program. <laughs> and I will tell you, it is hard to take a bad picture of a sign. So don't be intimidated. Document everything you do because you can't go back later. You know, you forget about it or it be, the sign gets damaged. And um, you can't manipulate stuff too much in Photoshop or it starts to look Weird. a little bit fake. So, yeah. um, so take pictures of everything you do. Um, and yeah, it's hard to take a bad photo of a sign. And the best way to get better at taking photos is to take more photos. So get out there and take great photos. Yeah, it's not like you have film costs anymore. Right. Okay, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This has been great. Yep, thank you.